Chapter 15 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 15 The day was born and dead. The fire, companion of the night, already shone in the wigwam of Araquém. The stars, daughters of the moon, rolled their slow and silent courses in the blue heavens, awaiting the return of their absent mother. Martin gently rocked himself, and his soul, like the white hammock which waved from side to side, wavered between one and another thought. There the pale-faced virgin awaited him with chaste affection. Here the dark maiden smiled upon him with ardent love. Iracema leant languidly against the head of the hammock. Her large black eyes, tender as those of the sabia thrush, sought the stranger and pierced his soul. The Christian smiled. The virgin, trembling like the sahi bird, fascinated by the serpent, bent her yielding form and reclined upon the warrior's bosom. He strained her passionately to his heart. His lips sought her longing lip, and thus they celebrated in the sanctuary of the soul the hymen of love. In a dark, obscure corner sat the pajé, plunged in the contemplation of things remote from this world. He heaved one long, sad sigh. Did his heart forebode that which his eyes could not see? Or was it some ill-omened presentiment concerning the future of his race, which re-echoed in the soul of Araquém? No one ever knew. The Christian gently repelled the Indian girl. He would not leave a trail of disgrace in the hospitable wigwam. He closed his eyes that he might not see her, and endeavor to fill his thoughts with the name and the fear of God. Christ, Jesus, Mary. A calm returned to the warrior's breast, but every time his eye rested upon the Tabajara Virgin, he felt the blood course through his veins like liquid fire. Thus, when the thoughtless child stirs the live embers, its sparks fly out and consume its flesh. The Christian shut his eyes, but amid the darkness of his thoughts, the Tabajara Virgin ever arose, and ever more beautiful. In vain his heavy lids invoked sleep. They opened, despite all his endeavors. An inspiration from heaven at last descended upon his troubled mind. Beautiful maid of the desert, this is the last night of thy guest under the roof of Araquém. Would that he had never come here. For thy sake and for his own, make his sleep glad and happy. Let the warrior command, and Iracema will obey. What can she do to make him glad? The Christian murmured low, that the old pajé might not hear him. The Virgin of Tupã keeps the dreams of the Jurema, which are sweet and pleasant. A sad smile was Iracema's answer. The stranger is going to live forever, encircling the white virgin. Never more will his eyes behold the daughter of Araquim. Yet he wishes that sleep should close his lids, and that dreams should convey him back to the land of his brothers. Sleep is the warrior's rest, said Martin and dreams are the gladness of his soul. The stranger would not bear sadness with him from the land of hospitality, nor would he leave it in the heart of Iracema. The virgin sat, unmoved. Go, and return with the wine of Tupin. When Iracema came back, the pajé was no longer in the wigwam. She drew from her bosom the bowl which she had hidden under her carioba of cotton, interwoven with feathers. Martin seized it from her hands and drained the few drops of bitter green liquid. 
presently, the hammock received his torpid form. Now he may live with Iracema, and gather the kisses from her lips, which ripen there amidst smiles, like the fruit in the corolla of the flower. He may love her, and may savor the honey and perfume of this love, without leaving its poison in the virgin's breast. The joy was life, only more real and intense. The evil was a dream, an illusion. To him, the maiden was an image, a shadow. Iracema withdrew, silent and sorrowful. The warrior's arms opened, and his lips gently murmured her name. The juruchi flitting about the forest hears the tender cooing of her mate. She flutters her wings and flies to meet him in the warm nest. Thus, the virgin of the desert nestled in the warrior's arms. When morning came, it found Irasema sleeping like a butterfly in the petals of the beautiful cactus. Her cheek was suffused with the blushes of modesty, and as the first sunbeam sparkles through the early dawn, on her brightened face shone the happy smile of the bride, the aurora of happy love. Martin, seeing Iracema still pressed to his heart, thought that the dream continued, and closed his eyes not to disturb it. The possema trump of the braves thundering through the valley awoke him from the sweet illusion. He knew then that he was alive and awake. His cruel hands smothered the kiss which expanded like a flower on the bride's lips. The kisses of Iracema are sweet in dreams. The white warrior fills his soul with them. But in life, the lips of the Virgin of Tupin are bitter and painful, like the Jurema thorns. The daughter of Araquen hid her joy in her heart. She was hushed and startled like the bird which feels the coming storm. She quickly withdrew from the wigwam and plunged into the river according to custom. The Jandaya never returned to the wigwam, and Tupin no longer owned his virgin in the Tabajara land. End of chapter 15